Hello everyone! Welcome back to EcoBoost. My name is Kate Arnell and it's nearly Christmas. Uh, I put my Christmas tree up about a week ago and tried to film the process for you guys to show you some of my homemade Christmas tree decorations and to show you the Christmas tree that I've been growing on our balcony. I love getting ready for Christmas and growing up one of my favourite things to do was decorating the Christmas tree which was often the tallest most awkwardly shaped Christmas tree but we loved it. <laughs> I just I actually really love like how chaotic this tree looks. I mean the tinsel's kind of hanging off at random angles. Basically as kids we were allowed to just get really creative and decorate the Christmas tree. Our parents weren't fussed about how it looked presentation wise, they just wanted us to have fun with it. So without further ado, let's hop back in time and decorate the Christmas tree. I think this was actually a 90s dance move that we did a lot. Sorry, you had to see that. It's December, woo! And I'm gonna put my Christmas tree up today. I'm very excited. Um, so I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride, for the sleigh ride. Let's keep this on theme. These are my Otis and Eleanor uh, Bluetooth speakers. So they're totally portable, made from bamboo. And uh, I just think they're really cool. I brought them out to play some Christmas tunes on. Oh, I'm so excited. Christmas music, woo! So this is where I want the Christmas tree to go. We had it here last year. And because it's kind of a smallish tree, I mean, let's say medium, it has definitely grown over the summer. Um, it's quite nice to give it a bit of height by putting it on top of this sort of wooden chest of drawers that we've got. So normally on here, I have this smells incredible. It's a glass jar filled with cloves and some cinnamon sticks and some leftover orange, which was dried out when I made Christmas decorations a few years ago. And it kind of sits there year round. I usually leave the lid on, um, and then when I take the lid off, the smell just fills the room. It's a really lovely Christmassy smell. These are my succulents, um, which I brought home from an Ikea, Ikea workshop. These are the spoons we carved. I love carving spoons. So I'm hoping to maybe treat myself to a little spoon carving kit next year um, and start whittling away at 2017. Exciting. These are some logs and I kind of picked them up as a festive addition about two years ago. I'm always trying to find ways of making our flat feel a bit more cabin-like. This is my stag tea light holder. I love him, he's so nice. Again, I kind of keep him out year round. Um, my husband, got him for me from eBay about five or six years ago. And then in between festive seasons, I started putting our fairy lights in this glass vase. So the Christmas tree is gonna sit on here. So I've gotta find a new spot for all of these bits and bobs. It's a challenge guys, but I accept it. I'm excited, we're decorating a Christmas tree, woo! Our balcony is a little bit of a mess right now. I really need to spend some time neatening it up a little bit, I think. So this, is our Christmas tree. I got it last year from a company called The Christmas Forest and I bought it potted. So those are the new shoots on the end. They're ever so slightly brighter green, I guess, than the rest of the tree. And they popped up over the summer, so exciting. So it's definitely growing. Seems like quite a happy little tree. I'm pretty sure there are a few spiders living on there. So we might have a few festive eight-legged friends joining us, but you know, the more the merrier. This, by the way, has turned into a sort of extra compost heap. It started out as being a box where I was growing red onions and then I started noticing loads of awesome worms in this box. It seemed to be like they were thriving and the soil has got like an amazing quality to it. it feels incredible. So I've started putting in little bits of food scraps and I've got some leftover wool there and all sorts. Here we go, let's see if I can pull out some worms. There's one there. Oh, there's another one. Gosh, there's always quite a few. There's, I mean, there are so many. Hey, guys. Let's cover them back up. And soon as we're out here, I thought I'll quickly show you my other worm bin. Ooh, that, by the way, is some chard that's still growing. How awesome is that? So there you go, lots of little wrigglers in there too. Um, sometimes with these bins, I find that they can get a little bit too moist. Um, so I have to take the lid off and let them dry out a bit and add in a lot more 
dry brown material like paper and um, like egg boxes and stuff. So I just thought I'd show you guys some of the worms because very sweetly some of you have asked after them wanting to know how they're getting along and I think they're doing pretty well actually. I'll tell them you said hi but let's crack on with the Christmas tree. This isn't a worm video, this is a Christmas tree video, okay. Our Christmas tree will definitely need repotting after this. It's got some shoots coming out at the bottom. So after Christmas, I'll repot it for the second time, which kind of means it's doing pretty well, I think. It's definitely growing. So I started out by dressing the Christmas tree with the fairy lights. These ones are LED lights, which means that they use a lot less energy and they don't overheat. I've had these for about five or six years and they're still going strong. I don't know why I've squatted down like that. <laughs> I just want to show you this real quick because I picked it up today. I ordered it on Etsy. It's a little knitted robin. I think his nose is a little wonky from being in the post. There we go, Let's sort you out. So it's by a brand called Little Conkers and it says sustainable handmade creations. Patterns, kits made for you, handmade in West Sussex. So you can either buy the kit to make the decorations yourself or you can buy them ready made. And it's a really great example of a plastic free, eco friendly, Christmas decorations. So if you're not into making your own, this is probably the way to go. Let's try and do a little close up. It arrived in just a brown box with a bit of tissue paper. And what I love is that she even used the um, like brown paper tape that can be recycled just as regular paper. Um, so no plastic tape, hooray! And then just a little invoice. So yeah, really pleased. I did specify no plastic packaging in my order on Etsy, which is something I've gotten into the habit of doing a lot now if I do order anything online. Um, doesn't always work, but often works. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this little one. Ah, there he is on the Christmas tree. He looks so cute. I also have a bunch of homemade Christmas decorations that I made several years ago and that seem to be lasting really well. So this is a stick of cinnamon and I just tied a bit of leftover string that I had probably from a present in days gone by or something and I think it looks really cute. I've also done the same with a bunch of cinnamon sticks and tied around some ribbon. Cinnamon sticks are kind of easy to buy in bulk if you've got a spice shop or a shop that sells uh, spices and herbs near you, that's great. Uh, but also Steenberg's sells a glass jar of organic cinnamon sticks as well. I made these dried orange slices about three years ago and they've lasted so well. So I've been bringing them out and decorating the tree for the last few years with those. And they're so easy to make and I think they look really cool. I just cut an orange into thin round slices and then dried those slices in an oven on a low temperature for several hours until they'd fully dried or dehydrated and then just tied a piece of ribbon or twine or whatever I had to hand around them and I just think they look very traditional and cool and I did actually burn a couple of pieces so I just put them in the jar which already had the cloves in and some cinnamon sticks and it kind of adds a nice extra layer of scent. I've also got a couple of other fun decorations that I've gathered over the years so one is this Santa Claus, which I got from a German market when I went to Berlin, I think. The little owl was originally a badge or a pin, um, but I thought he'd make a cute Christmas decoration. I like that he hangs slightly slanting downwards because his eyes are so wide, it looks like he's in shock and like slightly scared of falling off the tree. I got the little wooden rabbit from a random Christmas stall several years ago. And then my mum got me this super smiley Christmas reindeer ornament and I love his face. He's so inviting. I often use him to focus the camera when I'm filming on my own. So he's kind of out year round, but he's definitely a Christmas ornament. And she got him for me when I first moved to London about 10 years ago. This cracked kind of vintage looking, very large bauble, it's actually too heavy for the tree. So I put it on a lower branch and then supported it with the logs that I already had on top of that chest of drawers. I've also got some pine cones, which I tied some twine around. We also have this Robin plant pot holder, which I put under the Christmas tree. And I'm gonna put some cinnamon sticks inside because they smell really nice. They smell very Christmassy. 
I also made some salt dough ornaments for the first time. And it was actually pretty easy. I just used a cup of flour, not self-raising flour, because apparently that messes with the structure of the dough. So just regular plain flour. And then I added half a cup of salt and half a cup of water. And then I gave it a good stir, but realized that I probably should have put in a bit more flour because it was quite loose and sticky, the dough. So I added in some more flour and then just kept stirring until it got to the right consistency. I then kneaded the dough and then rolled it out until it was about, I wanna say a centimeter thick or thereabouts. And I used a knife to cut out Christmas shapes. If you've got cookie cutters, biscuit cutters, whatever, then that would work really well. I personally don't have any, so I just used a knife to cut out various Christmas shapes. So that's a Christmas tree, in case you were wondering. And then I really like stars, so I decided to cut out a few stars as well and used a straw to punch a hole in the top so that the twine can go through really easily. I wish I could tell you what this shape was. Um, <laughs> I think I had snowflake in mind, so let's just call it a snowflake. So all my festive shapes that I cut out went onto a greased baking tray and then I just put them in the oven for around two hours. They look so cute, I'm really pleased with those. I also had this random bow which I think had fallen off a wreath or something maybe and some buttons hanging around and I used some twine and sticky paper tape. Paper tape is great by the way if you're looking for a, an eco-friendly alternative to sticky tape, sellotape, anything that's a plastic tape then the brown tape is great because it can be recycled as paper. For wrapping gifts and stuff I'd always prefer to use twine and try and tie something securely but it's great to have some brown paper tape on hand if I do need it. So I simply stuck some thread to the back of the buttons and then hung them on the tree. And I think they look really cute. So I grew up with a bearded fairy on top of my Christmas tree. <laughs> That's what we called her anyway. She basically had a mop of blonde hair and a matching blonde collar but the blonde collar had come up onto her face and looked like a beard and she remained that way until her very last days. I'm not sure what happened to her. Anyway, I thought I'd try and make something for the top of my tree that was perhaps a little classier than a beard of fairy although she will forever remain in our hearts. So I'm gonna try and make a star using twine and some sticks that I've gathered. I've basically been foraging the <laughs> parks of London for twigs and sticks. So we'll see what happens. It might work, it might not work. Let's see how it goes. To make the star, I took the twigs and twined them together into a star shape and then wrapped the twine around the body. And I'm really pleased with it. Also, a local high street to me was putting up Christmas trees as part of the decorations down the high street. And they had lots of branches from the trees that had either fallen down or that they trimmed and they weren't using. So when I was walking home, I just asked if I could have them and they were more than delighted to give them to me, um, which was really nice. So I walked home with several Christmas tree branches and decided to firstly try and use some of it to decorate bits around the home so put them on top of pictures for example and then the rest of them I tried to make a homemade wreath with and let's just say I've learned a lot from this wreath making experience in that I probably should have had a solid structure to put the branches around there's definitely room for improvement And there you have it, that's my Christmas tree, all lit up and looking beautiful. I think it looks really festive and cute and yeah, I love it. If you've enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go eat a mince pie now.